Well, it looks like we're going to try to go to 2 Corinthians chapter 9, Malachi chapter 3, Proverbs chapter 3, and Hebrews chapter 7. And I got a few more, but we'll cut off right there. Amen? Remember, you said you believe in miracles, right? It will be a miracle if we get there. But you know, we, <clears throat> I want to talk to you a little bit this morning about tithe and offering. Just, sir, just want to talk to you this morning about tithe and offering. Uh, I have a lot of people ask me, you know, you seem to be doing well. You, you, you deal with a lot of things, but you always seem to come out on top. Well, this is why. Amen. I get in his word, find out what his word says, and then I go after it. I don't turn away. The Lord said, if we would go after him, he would go after us. Amen. He said, you take care of my business, and I'll take care of your business. Right? So we're going to open up with a word of prayer, and we're just going to jump right in. Our precious Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity. Lord, of coming into this place. Lord, I thank you for each and every one that's here. Lord, I thank you for those that are watching. Lord, I thank you for opening every heart, every mind. Lord, I thank you for your word. It never quits. It never fails. It never gives up. And Lord, I thank you right now for helping each and every one of us to receive this, Lord, to walk in this and to grow through it. Lord, I thank you for it right now. It's in your precious name we pray. Amen. You know, I have a lot of people tell me, you know, that tithe and offering has been done away with. Well, I, we're going to see a few places here in, in the New Testament where they talk about tithing and offering. But if, if we do away with tithing and offering, how does the church survive? Amen? I mean, how does the church survive if we do away with tithing and offering? It's, it's, it's just impossible, right? Right? All right, now, now here's what most people say. But brother, the gospel's free. Hmm. Brother Keith, you've been walking in this gospel. Has it been free for you? No, it's not. How about it, Miss Tammy? Been free? Not been free for me. You know what? It wasn't free for Jesus. It cost him his life. It wasn't free for the disciples. It cost each and every one of them their life, right? You know what? If you walk in this word, if you follow Jesus, it's going to cost you your life, right? So the gospel is not free. The gospel will cost you everything that you got. Right? Amen? Excuse me. You know, when you love somebody, no cost is too great, is it? When you love somebody. I didn't say when you lust somebody. Or when you think you love somebody. I said when you love somebody. Money don't cost too much. Amen? When something has your heart, it's got all... That you got, right? Amen. I mean, if one of my one of my youngins needed something, I would do everything in my power to get everything they needed. Amen? Why? Because I love them that much. They mean that much to me. Amen? You in here. I would do anything to help you. Because I know you would do anything to help me. But the main reason I do it is because the word tells us that we should help one another. Amen. This is for you that say, I don't need to tithe. I don't need to worry about offerings because, see, I got enough. Me and my household, we bless, we take care of, we, we taken care of, so we don't need no more. Amen? If that's you, this is what I have to say to you uh, the way the Word says it. Shame on you. Shame on you. If you're in this Word, if you're in it just for yourself, you're in it for the wrong reason. We ought to be in it to take this Word forward. Amen? What we get as a result of it should be the, the benefits, if you will, the bypass of it, the leftover of it. Amen? Not that the Lord's given us what's left over, but even His leftovers, Keith, are better than anything we could do. Amen? So we shouldn't, we shouldn't be going into this Word. We shouldn't be going into situations thinking, Oh, Lord, what am I going to do? You know, I got this and I got this, and Lord, what am I going to do? If that's you this morning, if you're wondering, what am I going to do? Get in this Word. Meet Jesus. Amen? All of this stuff that comes in will be His then. Amen? He said, get in, get in my account, if you will. Follow me. Amen? Let's look at 2 Corinthians. And let's start with, I'll tell you what. 
Yeah, let's just start verse number five. I was trying to back up, but that would be far enough. He said, Therefore, I thought it necessary to exhort the brethren that they would go before unto you and make up beforehand your bounty, wherefore you had notice before that the same might be ready as a matter of bounty and not as covetousness. Not as covetousness. He said, But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Did you hear that? He which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Right? He didn't say it was up to the Lord how you got blessed. He said it's up to you. Amen? He said, Every man according as he purpose in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or out of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. Amen? The Lord don't want your money if you're having to say, Man, I really don't want to turn loose of this today. Amen? You may as well put it back in your pocket. He, he said, I won't receive it. Right? As we've, as we've sat around here, you know, churches, we, we'll receive it. We'll pay the bills. We'll do what we got to do with it. But you're hurting yourself. Amen? Get in the covenant. Get excited about tithing and offering. Amen? I've been doing this now for... 19, 20, 21 years, and you know what? I've never outgive God. Never. Every time I've stepped up and done what He's told me to do, He's always backed me up. Amen? I have come out of it more blessed than I went in. Right? Let's look at verse number 7 again. He said, Every man according as he purpose in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly, nor out of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. Amen? Look at verse number 8. And this, this is for you that say, well, I got enough and I don't, you know, I, don't, I ain't really worried about nobody else. Me and mine took care of. He said, and God is able to make all a grace abound towards you that you always have an all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. Well, that just took you out of it, didn't it? Amen? He said he didn't want it to stop with you. He wants you blessed. What's the number one reason that the Lord's going to bless me and you? So we can be a blessing. So we can bless somebody else. Amen? Amen? I mean, he, he loves us so much. What if everybody, what if everybody gave? What if everybody gave and took care of one another? How much lack would we have in the world today? I mean, how much? There wouldn't be any, would there? Can I tell you, there's not, a, there's not a lack in America today. There's greed in America. There's selfishness in America. There's covetousness in America. And you know what? A lot of them are Christians. Hello, don't throw rocks at me. A lot of them are Christians. Amen? Don't throw rocks at me. Don't get mad at me. Grab hold of this. Amen? I didn't bring this this morning to, to get on any toes, to upset anybody, to make anybody mad. But I do want to stir us up. Amen? It's time we as, as Christians started challenging one another. It's time we started shaking one another and say, Hey, brother, it's time to wake up. It's time to get serious for the Lord. Amen? Amen? I mean, it's... If you ain't going to swim, get out of the water. Amen? That's about as easy as I know how to say it. Verse number 9, he said, As it is written, he has dispersed, he has dispersed abroad, he hath given to the poor, his righteousness remaineth forever. Now he that ministers seed to the sower, both minister bread for your food, and multiply your seed sown, increase the fruits of your kind, uh, fruits of your righteousness, being enriched in everything to all bountifulness, which causes through us thanksgiving to God. Amen? He wants us to depend on Him. But how are we going to depend on Him if we're depending on ourselves? Amen? How are we ever going to depend on Him if it always winds up being what I've done, what I can do, how I can make it? Amen? 
Folks, it shouldn't be about me and you. It shouldn't be about how am I going to do it. Right? When you get in a financial covenant with the Lord, when you start tithing and offering, and I didn't say because you had to, because you want to. When you do something because you want to, then it's coming from your heart. Amen? You know, I can remember growing up and living at home, I had to do things. I didn't want to do them, Brother Keith. I had to do them. Amen? I mean, I knew what the belt looked like. I knew what the switch looked like if I didn't do it. Right? So I knew this is what I got to do. Amen? But I didn't do that because I wanted to. I done it because I had to. Amen? You know what? I don't go home to my wife and my kids every night because I have to. I go home to them every night because I want to. Amen? I don't show up here on Sunday morning, Wednesday night because I have to. I show up up here because I get to. I want to. Amen? This is who I am. You're just as much a part of my family as my family. Amen? I consider each and every one of you my family. Right? Tell you what, if you will, turn to Malachi chapter 3. I keep talking, we won't ever get where we need to go. Malachi chapter 3. This is one of the very first places that I was taken in the Bible about tithe and offering. Amen? I had somebody that was here to church, and after service was over with, they told me that they wanted to take me home, and they need to talk to me a little bit. And you know what? At that time, I owed everybody. I'd lost my job. IRS was coming after me. Brother Keith, if, if you seen somebody that was in bad shape, I was in bad shape. Amen? I owed everybody, and I'm not kidding. I had credit cards that I would take this credit card to pay that credit card. You ever been there before? Don't go back there. Amen? Don't go back there. Let me tell you something. If, if, if you at this point... If you're taking your Visa card to pay your Home Depot account, you got a problem. Amen? It's time to start cutting it off. It's trying to figure out what you need to do. Well, I'm ashamed to say, but it took me a long time to figure out what I needed to do. Amen? I thought I'd just work more hours. I'd just do more things. I'd just make more money. Didn't work out that way, though. Just didn't work out that way, Brother Keith. You know what happens when you start losing sleep? Because you're working all the time. And then you're worried about your bills that you can't pay, so you can't rest. You know what starts happening when you're working 70 and 80 hours a week? Then you, your health starts to deteriorate, right? Then your family starts to deteriorate. You start having problems between one another. Stress comes in, amen? See, I was dealing with all that. I was going through all that. I was a Christian, and I was going through all that. Go ahead and say it. Shame on you. You're right. Shame on me. I shouldn't have been in that situation, but I was. Amen? This morning, if you shouldn't be in that situation, but you are, I got good news. His name is Jesus. Amen? Amen? Let's, just, let's just pick up at verse number 7. And, and, and this is about where the conversation started. He said, Even from the days of your fathers you have gone away from, away from mine ordinances, he said, and have not kept them. Return unto me, and I will return unto you, saith the Lord of hosts. But ye say, wherein shall we return? Now you listen to verse number 8. I realize this is the Old Testament, but I want to get your attention this morning. I, I would be willing to bet most Christians have never heard Malachi chapter 3. Amen? But I want you to hear it this morning. Let's look at verse number 8. He said, will a man rob God? You know, that's in bold letters in my Bible. Will a man rob God? He said, yet ye have robbed me. But ye saith, where have we robbed thee? He said, in tithes and offerings. Amen? Tithes and offerings. You say that's the Old Testament. Well, if you make a covenant even in the Old Testament, the Lord will honor it. Amen? Tithe and offering is the way they made it. Amen? We just seen in Corinthians about what the Lord said about giving. Amen? If you start in Genesis and go through the whole Bible, you ought to be able to get a theme, Martin. 
Looks like to me the Lord wants us to give. Amen? I didn't say He was going to be mad at you. I didn't say all kinds of things were going to happen to you. But I said the Lord wants you to give. Amen? The Lord wants, he wants to be able to take care of you. He wants to be able to bless you. Amen? Uh, verse number 9, he said, You are cursed with a curse, for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. He said, Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse that may be meat in my house, and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven, and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. He said, And I will rebuke the devourer for your sake, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, neither shall your vine cast the fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. He said, And all nations shall call you blessed, for you shall be a delightsome land, saith the Lord of hosts. Amen? Well, when I got taken home that Sunday afternoon, I had a few other scriptures, and, and this one, and he said, you know, the Lord, he said, uh, the Lord want me to tell you something. This is exactly how he said it. The Lord want me to tell you something. He said, if, if you think you can do more with that 10% than he can, he said, just keep it. Just keep it. I mean, it's up to you. You know, I, I'm not mad at you. The Lord's not mad at you. The church is not saying you can't come back. You're welcome anytime. We'll help you all we can. But the Lord's saying, if you want him to help you, you've got to give him something to help. Amen? Amen? How many people have seen farmers before? You see them, they go out there, they work the field, they disc it. I don't know what in all they do. Fertilize it, but they get it ready for a harvest, right? They get it ready for a crop. But what have they got to do? They have to sow something first, don't they? Well, what if they don't sow anything? They don't get anything out of the ground, do they? Amen. Folks, if, if, if you don't sow in the Lord, if you don't trust Him, if you don't prove Him, you'll be just like I was. You'll be on your own. Amen. The Lord don't want you on your own. The Lord don't want you barely getting by. Amen. As, that, as I remember that same individual telling me, he said he lived at the end of, what, what was it, Poverty Lane at the corner of Grumbling, Grumbling Avenue. He was in a rough place too, but he figured out, this, this is the way out. The Lord showed me this is the way out. Amen? Well, you know what? 20 years ago, the Lord showed me this is the way out. Amen? He said, you can stay there, but you don't have to. This morning, Christians, church, you can stay there, but you don't have to. You don't have to. You can make a decision today that things are going to change. Amen? You say, well, well brother, I, I just don't. You know what? If I, ha if I had it, I'd give. Well, just do like I've done. Just take what little bit you do have and start giving it. Amen? Show the Lord that you're serious. Right? Talk's cheap. Talk's cheap. But show Him, Lord, I'm serious about this. You know what? Ask Him. Say, Lord, give me something to give. And you know what? I know He'll give it to you. You know why? Because He did me. Amen? As, as I call it, He blessed me on credit, Brother Keith. He blessed me on His good name. Not on mine, because I'm not, I'm not of myself anymore. I'm of Him. So he put stock in me. He said, I'm going to put it in your hands and see what you do with it. Amen? Starting this morning, you start, you start praying. You start believing that the Lord is going to give you something to give. Amen? And when he gives it to you, you give it. Right? Because I can tell you now, the Lord's not going to give to you to just put in your bank account and build you up. That's not his purpose. That's not his goal. His purpose is to put it in hands that he knows that he can do whatever he needs to do with it. If he tells you to give it here, you're going to do it. You're not going to hesitate. If he tells you to give it here, you're going to do it. You're not going to hesitate. Whatever he tells you to do with it, he knows he can trust you. When you become that individual, you won't be in lack anymore. Amen? Amen? I didn't say you wouldn't be in want. 
I didn't say you wouldn't be in want. There's a lot of things I want. How about you? You know what? With a stroke of a pen, I can go get it and you can too. But what's it going to cost us? And I'm not talking about money. I'm talking about time. I'm talking about things that, that's going to pull us away from this Word. Amen? You know, ever since that day, me and my wife, we look and we try to figure out, before we go somewhere, what's the cost? What are we going to spend? What are we going to do? Amen? Because I'm not going to fly in that blind. I'm not going in and, and wind up spending $400 on groceries and didn't have but a $200 budget. Hello? Hello? That's the way the old me used to do. Amen? Brother Keith, I got to have another butters. Right? Got to have them. Right? Got to have chocolate milk. All kind of stuff we got to have. But you know what? When times got tough, when it got tough and we couldn't hardly pay our bills, we didn't need no chocolate milk. We didn't need no Nutter Butters and no Debbie Cakes. Hello? We didn't even need sausage and bacon. Amen? We needed Mr. Roman. Y'all ain't never heard of him before, have you? Just add a little water. <sighs> Nastiest things I've eaten. In Jesus' name, I'll never eat another one because I have to. In Jesus' name, I'll never eat another one because I have to. Amen. He might, my change, taste buds may change and I may eat another one, but it won't be because I got to in Jesus' name. Amen. If that's you this morning, you can make that same statement that I just made if you'll walk with Him, if you'll trust Him, if you'll prove Him. Amen. I'm not honking my horn this morning. I've missed it many times. I'm just trying to help you this morning. Amen. You know, as soon as I got through with Malachi chapter 3 and we got through talking and I went in and I told my wife, she said, you know, we got all this stuff, you know, this, this is what we got. And this is what's due. And I'm going to tell you, this stack over here was a whole lot bigger than what I had. And she said, I just don't see how we're going to do it. I said, well, I figured it out. The Lord showed me how we're going to do it. She said, well, how are we going to do it? All excited. I know she thought we was going, we're going to borrow some more money. But that ain't what the Lord said. The Lord said, give. And it shall be given unto you. Press down, shaking together, running over, good measure, shall men give unto your bosom. Right? So I told her, I said, well, we're going, at this time, we was paying our tithe. Amen? We're going to pay our tithes, and then we're going to pay our bills. Amen? So you know what? The very next Sunday, I put my ties in, 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 the, in the plate. It was there. It would talk cheap. Talk, you know what? What I put in there was not going to pay my bills. Amen? If I, if I put it in there and it don't work, I'm going under. But you know what? If I didn't put it in there, I was going under anyway. Right? I was in a no-lose no situation. All I can do from here is go up. Right? So we started tithing. And you know what? My youngins got sick. My youngins got sick. And that cost money that I didn't have. Amen? I lost time from work. And that cost money that it didn't have. But I didn't quit. I didn't quit. You know what? Laying in there one morning, early one morning before I got up, and I heard a horrendous noise. I went to the front and somebody had hit my car parked in front of my house. Brother Keith hit my car in front of my house while I was in the bed. Wasn't even in it. Amen? And the police come out and they look at it and they do all this stuff right here. He comes over there and I said, well, what, you know what, what, what you going to charge him with? Well, we're not charging anybody with anything. I said, hold on now. That man hit a parked car. Wrote it up as a no-fault accident. Still hadn't figured it out. You know what? The devil was working. He was trying to prove to me. See, the word of the Lord came. And the devil showed up to try to prove to me that that ain't going to work. 
I'm going to show you it ain't going to work. You know what? When you make a stand for the Lord, the devil's going to show up. He's going to see how much you mean it. He's going to see if your talk is cheap. Amen? He's going to see when you show up, do I mean it? Amen? Am I really going to do what I said I was going to do? Right? But we just kept on. We just kept on tithing. And you know what? Looking in the natural, it didn't look like we was getting any better. You know what? Lost my job. Lost my home. My wife lost her job. My mother lost her job. The company we was working at closed the doors and moved it to Mexico. Thanks, Bill Clinton. He made it easy for them. They closed the doors and moved it to Mexico. Paid them money to take it out of the United States of America. The President of the United States signed that bill. Thank you again. But the Lord took what you meant for my harm and He turned it around for my blessing. But not just mine. He blessed my wife and He blessed my, wife, uh, my mother. You know why? Because we didn't say what everybody else said. We didn't walk around talking about how bad it was going to be and how that was the end of us. And... No, the Lord said early when all of this started, He said, you put a different confession in your mouth. You say something different. Amen? Amen? The Lord's going to take this situation, no matter how bad it is, no matter what the devil meant for my destruction, the Lord's going to turn it around and He's going to make it a benefit for me and my family. You know what He done? He made it a blessing for me and my family. Amen? We got to go to school free of charge. The Lord made the un little small unemployment check that we got. You think unemployment's tough now. You should have lived on $90 a week. Amen. But we made it, Brother Keith. We done it. We done it. Because of Him. You know what? Even with that unemployment check, we was tithing on it. That's all we had. That's all we had. Talk cheap. You say, well, Brother Wayne, that, that $10 wasn't wouldn't going to make the church. No, but it was going to make me. It was going to make me or either it was going to break me. Amen? Amen? Brother Bruce, you remember what I told you when the Lord gave me that message? I said, well, I'm going I'm to prove the Lord. I'm going to prove the Lord. And everywhere I go and everybody that I see, if this works, I'm going to stand up and I'm going to tell them, the Lord is good as His Word and He'll take care of you if you'll do what He told you. I said, but if this don't work, if I go under, if I lose everything I got, everywhere I go and everybody I'm going to see, I, I'm going to tell them, keep your money. That junk don't work. Well, I'm still here talking about it. Amen? Must have worked. Amen? I wish I had time to stand here and tell you all the things that the Lord has done for me. And you know what? That's not to honk my horn. That's not to make me somebody. That's to show you the Lord's not a respect of a person. What He done for me, not only is He obligated to do it for you, but He wants to do it for you. Amen? Just get serious about it. Amen? Just make up your mind that I'm going to do this no matter what. Right? No matter what it looks like, no matter what comes out against me, I'm going to do this. Amen? We're running long. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 3. Proverbs chapter 3. I want to try to get this out. This, this is important this morning. Amen? Your whole financial future depends on it. If you're not in His covenant. Amen? And by the way, this morning I don't tithe and give offering because I have to. I do it because I want to. I will say 20 years ago when I started, I'd done it because I felt like I had to. But now I know better. And I'm telling you this morning, the Lord's not mad at you if you don't. He's not mad at you. He's not going to turn His hand away from you. But be realistic. 
How much, do, how much does he have to bless if you give him nothing? Amen. I mean, I'm just... Proverbs chapter 3. Let's just go to verse number 1. I always try to start at verse number 5, but let's just go to verse number 1. Hard, hard not to start at the beginning. He said, My son, forget not my law, but let thy heart keep my commandments. He said, For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about the neck, write them upon the table of thy hearts. He says, So shall thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Whew. He said, Trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not to thy own understanding. He said, don't you try to figure it out. Amen. Don't you try to figure out how the Lord's going to do it. Have you ever asked the Lord to do something for you? Something I'm talking about big that looked impossible to you. What was the very first thing you tried to do after you asked him? You tried to figure out how he was going to do it, didn't you? He said, you don't worry about that. You can't have confidence. You can't have faith if you're trying to figure out how I'm going to do it. If you're questioning whether I'm going to come through or not. Amen? He said, don't worry about that. Just know that I am. Amen? Verse number 6, he said, In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thy own eyes. And, and King James says, Fear the Lord and depart from evil. But I, I got that marked through, and I got honor the Lord. Trust the Lord. Amen? Honor the Lord, trust the Lord, and depart from evil. He said, It shall be health to thy navel and mark to thy bones. He said, Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thy increase. He says, So shall thy barns be filled with plenty, and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. Amen. The Lord said, I want to take care of you. Amen. I want to help you. But you got to help me help you. Right? Amen. You got to, you got to be there. You got to do something. Right? Malachi says we got, two, we got two things we have to do. He said you got to give, and then you got to prove it. The rest of it's up to the Lord. You do your part by giving, and then you stand on what you've done. No matter what it looks like. Well, how long have I got to do it, brother? Till it works. That's right, till it works. You know what? I had to do it a long time. I had, the first month I'd done it, man, it was total chaos at my house. I'm not kidding. It was bad. It was bad. It was bad. You know, I found out later the preacher come back and told me, you know, I, I wanted to come tell you I was sorry that I had to bring you that. Because, I mean, he seen what kind of shape we was in. He knew what kind of mess we was going through. And he thought, Lord, I hope this is you. But I know that's your voice. Amen. Folks, if you know that's his voice, you take it to him. Amen. You say, well, they might not receive it, but they might. If you don't give them an opportunity, they're never going to receive it. Yeah. Amen. This morning, I'm giving you an opportunity to receive it, to go after what the Lord's got for you, to stand up and say, devil, you're a liar, and never again will you steal from me. Right. Amen. Amen. The Lord said if we get in his covenant, he said the devil won't be able to put his hands on you. Right. Amen. Amen? Man, we didn't make Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 7. Just go to Hebrews chapter 7. That way you can see. You can see the New Testament. And he's talking about Melchizedek and Abraham. But tithe is mentioned in the New Testament. More than once. Amen? So you got homework today. I'll, I'll never get a chance to get into it. I'm not even going to try but Hebrews chapter 7. Hebrews chapter... I want you to start at verse number 1. And I tell you what, just read all 28 verses. And if you, if you want to do good, start at chapter... Start at chapter 3. Amen? Go from 3... Well... I tell you what, go from 3 all the way to... Yeah, just go to 13. Amen. I mean, if you're going to read from 3 to 13, you may as well get the first two. So just start at verse number 1. I mean, chapter 1. I mean, how important is it? This is just your life. 
I mean, you want to make it or not? You know, I had to wake up and I had to make up my mind. Am I serious about this? Church, we got to wake up and decide, are we serious about this? Amen? Because when you get serious about something, it don't matter, does it? It just don't matter. Amen? Just like we was in the mall one time. My, my kids, they went off and, and they come back and they said, uh, this, this guy's following us. And I said, well, where is he at? Daddy, he's a big man. I don't care. Where is he at? It's time to get serious. Amen? You messing with my family, it's time to get serious. Get serious about this word. Amen? Get serious about what this word means to you. About what Jesus means to you. Amen? I can tell you right now, he won't let you down, folks. He won't let you down. Peter, when he, when he gave him the word to walk out on the water, he didn't let Peter go under, did he? Did he? He gave him the word. He had all authority. He had, he had all right to walk on that water because the Lord told him he could. And as long as he was focused, as long as he was looking at, he was walking with him. You know, the Bible tells us, in him beginning to sink, Jesus reached down and pulled him up. You know what that tells me, Brother Keith? He, all, he was almost to Jesus. In order to be able to reach out and grab, pick up somebody, they got to be almost there. Amen? Peter had almost made it all the way to Jesus. How many times we as Christians, we've almost made it and we quit just a little too early? Amen. Don't give up on tithing and offering. I'm living in a home right now. Right now. That I shouldn't be living in. The devil tried to make sure I didn't. But you know what? The Lord stood for me. Amen. I got automobile now that when I got it at the time, I couldn't afford it. But the, I knew the Lord said, this is your vehicle. Amen. Don't quit on the Lord. Trust Him. Prove Him. Amen. Because regardless of all the population, popular things that you've heard about the Lord being in charge and what all this stuff, He's only in charge of your life if you allow Him to be. Amen. I love you this morning. I appreciate you being here. I hope you received something about tithe and offering. Amen. 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 I challenge you, I really do, to read the book of Hebrews today. Hey, you, you say, brother, I've read that before. Well, read it again. Amen. Can the Lord give you something else out of it? Read it again then. Amen. I love you. You that are watching on camera, we thank you for, for joining us. We're going to have a service here at 1030. We're going to have some music. We're going to have some worship. We're going to have the word of God. Amen. We're going to have the truth. So you show back up and you support the Lord. Amen. We thank you. We love you. Have a blessed day.